Hey guys, it's Zach, aka Homes with an X. Welcome to DIY Drone Part 4. So I'm going to be talking about the prototype and also some of the components I've used and how I've designed this frame to integrate them seamlessly. Uh, by the way, sorry about the yellow filament. I'm going to be doing a nice black one soon, uh, but I had this on hand and for the video I thought it would show up a bit better and provide a better contrast with the components. So there is still a little bit of development needed on this design before it's ready for production but that is the beauty of rapid prototyping. I was able to print this prototype in a matter of hours, test fit the components, make some notes and then make the changes I needed in Fusion 360. So I'm just going to repeat this process until there are no further changes to make and then I can do the final assembly, uh, the wiring and calibration before the test flight. So this is my second 3D printed drone frame. You can download my first home, Homes Flight drone from the link in the description. It is a two piece frame, so the bottom uh, unibody frame holds all of the components in place and provides the structure and rigidity to allow it to fly. Uh, there is also a 3D printed canopy which fits on top uh, sealing the whole body and protecting the components. Uh, the cover also ensures a more minimal or a, a clean aesthetic uh, whereas the Homes Flight version 1 was a skeletal kind of body this is going to be an all enclosed uh, unit. Uh, this frame measures 210 millimeters from the center of one motor shaft to its diagonal opposite and it's completely open source so once the frame design is completely finished it'll be available for free download uh, through Thingiverse. Uh, so this particular prototype I printed in PLA, yellow PLA, uh, it's got three perimeters, uh, I think three, three top and bottom layers, and a 20% infill. It took about three hours to print on the OB1 Prism uh, after a couple of failed attempts, but I'm really happy with this result. Okay, so breaking down the design and the changes I need to make, the first thing I noticed was these uh, mounts for the flight controller stack. Uh, they're way too far forward so I originally had these centered in the frame uh, as, I, as you would expect and I moved them forwards to allow me to fit the battery uh, in the back here however after seeing the physical model I've decided I'm going to move that flight controller back to the center and I'll elongate the rear of this frame slightly to fit the battery in the back uh, the second thing is that I need to enlarge my center holes for the motor mounts I just did some poor measuring there the holes are uh, about half as big as they need to be to accommodate the motor shaft. I also need to add a recess to the entrance of the arm here. Uh, for this prototype I actually took a drill and drilled this out uh, because it didn't leave enough room for the wiring from the motor. Uh, as a side effect from that I decided to add some extra material where the arm meets the motor mount and that is to offset the reduction in strength caused by hollowing out the inside slightly. I increased the thickness of the motor mounts to 5mm from 4mm. So originally I was going to mount the Team Black Sheep VTX inside the top cover. For ease of assembly and a cleaner build I've made a small bracket to accommodate this on top of the flight controller stack. I've actually got a lot of room in there still because of the height of the camera so I thought it's a good spot for it and so I've added a recess inside the top cover to attach this aerial mount. Okay, so the receiver. Uh, I'm quite excited about this. Uh, so I'm using the Frisky, FR Sky, Free Sky. I'm using one of their receivers. It's an XM receiver. This thing is absolutely tiny. And I was, I'm going to mount this inside the top cover. Uh, it'll be the only component which won't be direct soldered. It's going to have the header pins and a connector and that'll mean that when you take the cover off you can just unplug it and you don't have any wires holding it all together. This thing is so tiny. And I'm going to be pairing this with my brand new Tyrannus QX7 transmitter. Uh, that just arrived from China a few days ago and I'm really excited. And I'm really excited about this thing. Uh, it looks like a really high quality piece of gear. Okay, so what about the ESCs and power distribution? Okay, so this is the Betaflight F3 
uh, flight controller. It features integrated power distribution, which eliminates the need for an external board and keeps the build again nice and clean, nice and minimal. Okay, so I'm also using a 4-in-1 ESC, which is actually responsible for some of the key features of this frame, uh, such as the sealed arms with wiring channels to conceal the wiring. Uh, it's going to allow me to make a much tidier, cleaner build, and this wouldn't really be possible using a traditional uh, separated ESC system uh, because I wouldn't have anywhere to mount those. And for the motors, I'm running these trusty Emax 2204 Mark II 2300 kV uh, motors. Um, so this is the second time I've used these motors on a frame and I love them. I find it super handy that you have the clockwise and counterclockwise thread uh, depending on which way the motor spins and they're really reliable. They also keep themselves cool very efficiently. I think those are going to give me some pretty good power on this little frame so I'm really excited to see how they how they perform. Alright, so on to the printing side of things. Uh, this lower frame only just fits inside the, the boundaries of my printing bed. Uh, it's really at the limit of what the printer can handle, but uh, after a couple of failed attempts this one printed really nicely. I will need to adjust the infill angle. Uh, it's kind of complicated, but I've done a little diagram to explain why. Okay, so imagine that you're printing a solid round disc and the infill pattern is 45 degrees. That looks great, it does the job, no worries. With the, the drone frame having 45 degree arms, that 45 degree infill is, ends up being perpendicular on two of the arms and parallel on the other two. So even though there are multiple solid infill layers, such as the top and bottom layers, two of those arms are gonna get one infill pattern and two of them are gonna get another. Because I don't want to have any variation between all of the arms, uh, I'm going to run the final frame at a 90 degree solid infill. And that way the whole frame has the same characteristics throughout. So inside the frame you can see I've added a few small webs to help reduce flex. And these motor guards uh, I'm actually quite proud of. This is the first uh, part of the drone that I designed and I've left them partially open to aid that cooling that the motors uh, provide. Well, it'll still give quite a lot of protection to the motors. Okay, so here's what I'm really most proud of. Uh, it's a sneak peek at the canopy design. So I've done a test print and it came out really good. Uh, here it is. So I printed this upside down, same uh, properties as this one in terms of infill, etc. And I printed this without any support material. You can see the angle of these sides is uh, very much at the limit of what my printer can handle without needing support material. As it happens, there was one layer that slipped slightly, but overall really clean. And I think when I get my Prusa, it's going to come out even better. The, the fitment between these two parts is near perfect. It actually, because of the nature of the join, it kind of fits together a little bit like a jigsaw. And the best part is uh, I've added these little studs in the form of screws and nuts on either side and in order to fix the canopy to the frame you take a small rubber band and stretch it around and there you go it's held in place really securely and I'm thinking that I'll probably I'll probably develop that further and have one at the front and back as well or instead but thanks to the tension of the rubber band combined with the shape of the fit, uh, it, it's really, really secure. So overall, I'm very happy with the progress on this project so far. Uh, it's coming along very nicely. And once I've done this uh, final development, I'll be able to work on the wiring and calibrations and actually give this thing a test flight and see how it goes. I'm still working on a full parts list. Um, so once I've done the final assembly, I will make that public so that uh, if you want to make this frame you can use the same parts as I am or get an idea of what you should be using. So in part 5 I will have the final iterations of the design printed, uh, I'll be doing a test assembly and yeah we'll, we'll see if it flies, <laughs> give it a go. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and if you learned something, which I hope you did, uh, please don't forget to give me a like, hit that thumbs up button, it's down there somewhere. Uh, also you can subscribe so that you don't miss my future videos and if you want to see more I recommend subscribing. It actually is good for both of us because it motivates uh, me to create more content and it lets you see it first. So 
Uh, make sure you do that. You can hit this button over here, somewhere down there. And also leave me a comment, let me know what you liked or didn't like. That's the only way I'm going to make these videos bigger and better each time. So thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you guys in part 5. See you next time. Thank you.